Over the weekend in Denver, the San Francisco Giants set their franchise record for home runs in a season. They won their 100th game, their 101st and 102nd games as well. And they lost, however, their captain, Brandon Belt, potentially to a thumb injury after getting hit by a pitch. So we will get into all of the details, the good, the bad, and the ugly from the Giants sweep in Denver on today's Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants Baseball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspic, and on this show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday talking about the San Francisco. Go Giants in a way that's data driven, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. And coming up on today's show, as I said, we are going to talk about so many things that happened with the San Francisco Giants this weekend. Uh, the number one thing, they swept the Colorado Rockies. They won their 100th, 101st, and 102nd games of the season. They are approaching the San Francisco Giants' uh, best mark of 103 wins. They just need one more to match that. They have a shot to win 106, which is the franchise record. And they have a two-game lead in the division. Most importantly, a two-game lead over the Dodgers in the division. So we'll talk about all of that and how the Giants were able to dominate this weekend in Denver. But also, did they lose Brandon Belt to an injury? He was hit by a pitch in the thumb, and he was removed from the game. They had an inconclusive scan, and they plan to have more tests here in San Francisco after they arrived home from Denver. So we'll get into that as well, and Brandon Belt's impact on this team. And then the last thing that we'll get into is Kevin Gosman just having a fantastic outing and why that's a really, really, really big deal for the Giants as they, you know, prepare to play in the playoffs. And hopefully when they play in the playoffs, it's going to be, you know, more than just a one game situation. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the state of this race. The Giants with 102 wins have a two game lead over the Dodgers. They have reduce their magic number to five. So the scenario goes, if the Giants can just, if they can go five and one, it doesn't matter if the Dodgers win all of their games, the Giants would win the National League West. If the Giants go four and two, the Dodgers would need to win every single game just to tie. And so for me, that's kind of what stands out because four and two would just be winning both series. And the Giants... Uh, play the Arizona Diamondbacks and San Diego Padres to finish out the season at home. So playing the D-backs at home, the Giants are very much favored to win that series. And then, you know, maybe you can sweep and then, you know, bringing in the Padres who are not playing for anything. They have been eliminated and they're really just fighting to stay over 500 at this point. So that is the state of the race. You know, projection systems have the Giants at roughly... 85, 90% odds to win this thing, to win the National League West. I was reading an article by Dan Zimborski at Fangraphs today talking about how the Giants are favored to outright win the division something like 85% of the time uh, and to win it even if, if there's a tiebreaker because that's the thing. The Dodgers being two games back, they really have to clear three games in you know six days uh, because otherwise a tie would mean that, you know, there's a playoff game to de- uh, one. It's not actually a playoff. It's game 163 to determine the winner of the division. And that game would be in San Francisco. So both teams are off today on Monday. The Dodgers have a three game series at home against the Padres. And then they finish out their season with a three game series at home against the Brewers. A very good team, although the Brewers aren't playing for anything. They just clinched. Yesterday, their division, 
and their kind of seed is already locked in. They're not going to be the number one seed in the league. It's going to be either the Giants or the Dodgers, and then they're not going to be caught by the winner of the NL East. So anyway, let's talk for a second about the home run record. The Giants, with their 236th home run of the season, broke the franchise record set in 2001 when Barry Bonds hit 73 of them and set the single season record. So just an an astounding accomplishment by this Giants team. Nobody even has 30, and yet they have set their franchise record for home runs. It just speaks to the depth of this team and how every single guy, including guys who are not even on the major league roster, but guys in the minor leagues who have contributed this year, like Tyro Estrada, just as an example, everybody has contributed and everybody is a power threat. And so just an unbelievable accomplishment. And I am just blown away that they were able to do it. Brandon Belt, and we'll talk about him next and his importance to this team. He tied the record and broke the record in the same game. Giants winning that second game of the series and their 101st win. So the Giants ended up 15-3 and against the Rockies this season. It's the most wins they've ever had against a single opponent. Uh, dating back to when they were 15-3, and they tied that record against the Astros in 1965. Uh, the Giants are going to have a really good shot to break that record that they just set when they play the D-backs. I believe they already have 14 wins against the Diamondbacks. So lastly, just a couple of other points from this sweep. Giants pitchers in Denver... 27 innings pitched, 34 strikeouts, one walk. One walk in three games in Denver. Huge recipe for success and a huge reason why the Giants were able to win, not just win this series, but sweep this series. They allowed exactly two runs in each of the three games, and that is a total recipe for success. Camilo Duvall and Kervin Castro uh, were great, and they've been great in September 20 and two-thirds innings in September for the two rookies, zero runs, 22 strikeouts. So their emergence is a huge deal for this Giants team, and those two could play a big role in the postseason. So coming up next, we're going to talk about the captain, Brandon Belt, his importance to this team, some of the unbelievable numbers he's put up, not just this year, but combining last year and this year, and then the state of his injury and if we're worried what the level of concern is and what they would do if he were not able to play. And then finally, we're going to talk about Kevin Gosman and the importance of his outing on Sunday when he went six innings, had 11 strikeouts and no walks. So, man, the pitching was just fantastic in Denver. But before we get into that, does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your neighbor's best friends log in for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. Hey, Giants fans, this is Ben Kaspic with an incredible app everyone who buys gas needs to know about. Get Upside. My listeners are making up to 25 cents for every gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or Google Play Store right now. Use promo code BASEBALL and get a bonus 25 cents per gallon on your first fill up. That's up to 50 cents cash back. Don't pay for Full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using Get Upside. Just download the app for free and use promo code BASEBALL to get up to 50 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank. Some people who drive a lot are making as much as two to $300 a month in cash back and there's no catch. The cash back gets added right to your account. You can cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free 
GetUpside app and use promo code BASEBALL to get up to 50 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank. That's code BASEBALL. All right, as promised, we're going to get into the captain, the state of the captain, Brandon Belt. Uh, I still just always, it's so funny and it's so great. This has just been a magical season. Whenever I think about Belt, I think about him and his uh, salmon shoes or whatever, trout shoes, bass shoes. He's got these fish shoes that, that he wears in the shower and they're the lucky shoes and he's been wearing them around. And just B- Brandon Belt has always struck me as a funny guy. And yet he's received so much criticism over the years from Giants fans. But man, the production has been there uh, the last couple of seasons. So it's great to see that fans are getting a taste of his personality and the production has just been so good. Uh, the The big catch is that he's going to be a free agent at the end of the season. So there's a huge question about, you know, I believe that they want him back. And, you know, the question is, what is it going to take? I think that they will offer him the qualifying offer. Kind of going off on a tangent here, but just know Brandon Belt has been so, so good. We're going to use numbers to back that up. And he is an impending free agent. So there's no guarantee that he's going to be back beyond 2021. Uh, I want to remind everyone this show is on YouTube. I, I mean to say that in the open and I often forget. So if you're listening on Apple, Spotify, wherever, please check us out on YouTube as well. It's a lot of fun. And if you are watching on YouTube, welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, you can subscribe. We do these shows every single weekday on all platforms and we're free on all platforms. So getting into the captain, Brandon Belt, he injured his thumb getting hit by a pitch. He was squaring to bunt. I know there's been some people in my on my Twitter mentions and and even on the post game show. I think Rich Aurelia was mentioning like why are you bunting? As if it was like a given that he was going to get hurt by bunting. He's bunting because there's nobody over there on the left side of the infield, and he sees a hit in front of him. If he just lays down a bunt, he can be safe. And it's kind of funny because it's like those same people. Who are saying, why don't you just go against the shift? Why don't you bunt against the shift so that so they don't shift on you so much? Well, he went to do it, squared to bunt. I think it's a good play. Kapler said it was a good play. And it just, I blame the pitcher. I mean, it was a inadvertent hit by pitch. They weren't trying to hit him, but it ran way inside. And the way it got him was really awkward. It just kind of hit that top hand thumb, I believe, yeah, his left thumb. And it bent it backwards and kind of hit the fat, meaty part of the thumb. So there's optimism that it's not a break. And that's the scary thing. I, I for one, also worry about potentially ligament damage. I am not a doctor by any means. But kind of the way it bent the finger back or the thumb back uh, looked to me like it could cause damage to like a tendon or something. I don't know. But He was able to stay in the game. At first, he was like completely in a heap, and that was a very scary sight given just how important he has been. He has just been absolutely red hot. And then the whole psychological component of this captain stuff and all the good vibes that have gone along with that. If anyone missed it, Brandon Belt declared himself captain of the team in a completely humorous but deadpan kind of way. He said he's the alpha of this team and somebody had to step up and fill that void and he's done it. And, you know, everybody now respects him. And he he said he needs to get off the plane first because he's the captain. And and they listened because he uh, was, you know, used his authority to to make them listen. It's funny, very funny. And, uh, you know, it's it's brought some some serious humor to this team in the last couple of weeks. But. He goes down and Gabe Kapler after the game said, quote, we got a fluoro scan after the game and it's inconclusive. So we will, we will get him x-rayed when we get back to San Francisco and obviously update you as we have more information. Brandon Crawford, who's obviously very close with Brandon Belt, said, quote, it's scary, especially when it's a fastball or a hard pitch, either close to a guy's hand or on his hand or fingers because there are so many little bones in there that you can break. Your hands are pretty important in baseball, especially his throwing hand. It's scary, but talking to him, he seems like he should be all right and hopefully not miss too much time. 
So I do put some stock into that. Obviously, Crawford has spoken to Belt. The fact that Belt was able to stay in after going down in the heap like he did, I mean, at first you're thinking the worst. These these hands are easy to break. Hit by pitch in the hand is always just like a coin flip. Sometimes guys come out of it fine, and sometimes they do not. Honestly, getting hit in the thumb is probably better than getting hit uh, in, in other places. Where it hit him, it just didn't seem like it pinched so much as it just kind of nailed that fat, meaty part of the thumb, which obviously would hurt a ton. It was like a 93-mile-an-hour fastball, but there's hope. I'm holding out hope, but an injury to Belt would be pretty catastrophic. They do have the depth to cover it. You would see Lamont Wade Jr. probably play first base most of the time. Darren Ruff, you would say, would platoon there, but Darren Ruff is currently on the IL, but coming back soon, hopefully. But that would mean somebody else playing in the outfield, obviously, if Wade Jr. is at first base, and that would probably be Steven Duggar. So the thing is, they have depth. They have moving parts. They're not like ever backed into a corner where they have to play someone they don't want to play. There's so many interchangeable parts that they could cover it, but Belt has just been such a critical part of this team, uh, especially recently. 18 home runs since coming off the injured list, uh, which was not that long ago, and 18 home runs was his previous career high. So just an incredible kind of streak he's been on. He has 29 home runs for the Giants this season in just 97 games. So if you combine last year and this year, it's like 148 games and he has 38 home runs. So less than a full season, 38 home runs. But it gets even better if you look at isolated power, which is slugging percentage minus batting average. And it's a critical way to kind of evaluate power because slugging percentage Say you're five for ten with ten or with five singles, your slugging percentage is five hundred because when your average and slugging are the same, it means all of your hits are singles. So slugging percentage can be a little deceiving in that way. But isolated power, slugging minus average, that's a zero isolated power if you're five for ten with five singles, even though your slugging percentage is five hundred. So ISO is a better way to kind of evaluate pure power. And Brandon Belt, the last two seasons combined, is at 310, which is third in Major League Baseball. Third in Major League Baseball among players with at least 500 plate appearances. The list goes Fernando Tatis Jr., Ronald Acuna Jr., Brandon Belt, Shohei Otani, Bryce Harper. Okay, unbelievable list that he's on. And those two years combined, he also has a 393 on base percentage, which is also elite so you combine these two numbers he's basically one of like two players and by the way that 393 on base percentage ranks seventh in baseball last two seasons combined and and the list goes soto juan soto bryce harper freddie freeman brandon nimmo ronald acuna jr yasmani grandal brandon belt so he's one of what one two players who has a 390 or better on base percentage and a isolated power of 300 or better. So, And the other player is Ronald Acuna Jr. So what Brandon Belt is doing with on base and power is simply remarkable. And it puts him among the very best hitters in the game. And his defense is super valuable at first base as well. And we saw that when Wilmer Flores came in after Belt had to be removed from the game and Flores made kind of a critical error that really could have cost the Giants, but their bullpen pitched around it. But Brandon Belt with the offense and with the defense is just really, really valuable to the Giants. And, you know, the numbers, I I, I realize I probably don't have time to get too much into this, but the production they've gotten out of first base has been the best in the game at first base and pretty much any position. They have something close to 50 home runs by their first baseman this year, the most in Major League Baseball. So just unreal kind of production that the Giants have gotten out of first base, and so much of it has to do with Brandon Belt. So coming up next, we're going to talk about Kevin Gosman and the importance of his outing on Sunday. Six innings, 11 strikeouts, 25 swings and misses, no walks, just a huge outing. We'll talk about why it's so important next. But first, did you know that Built Bar has so many delicious flavors? There's really something for everyone. When you talk to a Built Bar fan, they're definitely passionate about their favorites. 
If you don't know the Bilt Bar flavors, you're missing out. Coconut, cherry, raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, German chocolate. Want to know what my fla- favorite favorite flavor is? It's hard for me to choose. I, I often say salted caramel, but I also love raspberry. And the beauty of these Bilt Bars is that they taste like candy bars, but they're healthy too. 17 to 18 grams of protein and only four to five grams of sugar. I really wouldn't be eating anything with, you know, that's high in sugar if it's a protein bar. I want that to be healthy. And these Built Bars manage to do that with great, great taste. Go to BuiltBar.com and use promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your next order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. All right, as promised, we're going to talk about Kevin Gosman and the importance of his outing on Sunday. It's so important because Kevin Gosman has basically been inconsistent slash struggling a lot uh, in the second half of the season. Pretty much since the middle of July, it was a start against the Dodgers. They just kind of seemed to have his number. And ever since then, he's just been off and he hasn't been able to put it all together We've seen him at times have a good fastball, but the but the split fingered pitch just hasn't been there. And we've seen at times some good splitters, but it's been inconsistent, and he hasn't been able to throw, you know, for a whole outing to have that pitch. So why it's so important is because the playoffs are right around the corner. And I can remember in the early part of this month, I got so many questions about, you know, how much level of panic I have about Kevin Gosman and how he's you know, his struggles are bad news for the Giants in the playoffs. They're going to very much regret that they didn't make a move for a starting pitcher at the trade deadline and on and on. And I think there's merit to that because it would never hurt to have like, you know, Max Scherzer in this rotation in addition to having a, a Kevin Gosman, a Logan Webb, D. Scalfani Wood, etc. But, you know, what I kept saying at the time was that he has time to figure this out. He has you know, at the beginning of the month, end of August, I was saying he has like seven starts to get back on track. And the fact that he was completely back, that's the best that he's thrown in a couple of months, at least possibly all year, given that it was at Coors Field of all places. The fact that he found it and he has just one start to go before presumably he's going to get at least one chance in the playoffs. Let's hope there's still the chance that they end up in the wild card game. Actually, I think he is in line to start the wild card game because Logan Webb is set up to pitch the last day of the regular season, which would put Gosman in line to start either game one of a division series or the wild card game. Although they would have the option of starting Logan Webb in a game one of the division series if they don't go to the wild card game. But anyway, the fact that he locked himself in and were this close to the playoffs is kind of perfect. And he's got one more start. And let's hope if he can just replicate that and be on again, then we can just rest relaxed a little bit that Gosman maybe found it right at the right time. So for me, it's just super relieving. And let's get into some of the numbers on this day. As I said, he went six innings, 11 strikeouts and no walks, just that alone is incredible. I know it's the Rockies who are not a very good team, but they are a good team at home. And I mean, the Giants pitching in general in this series was incredible. Like I said, 34 strikeouts, one walk. But Gosman, he got into some trouble. There was an error. I think this error was by Solano, just didn't catch a line drive that was kind of right at him. And it it led to some stress there in that sixth inning. But Gosman was able to get through it, going through some tough hitters and ultimately striking out Trevor Story on a splitter. So Gosman in this game had 25 swings and misses, which tied a career high and marked the most by a giant starter this season. So the most swings and misses by any starter all season long was Kevin Gosman yesterday in Denver. 13 swings and misses came came on splitters. So, you know, a lot of them came on fastballs as well. His fastball has been great uh, all along. I mean, the velocity has been there, which has led us to believe he's not injured. He gets up in the upper 90s, and when he, when he's got his splitter working, it's just a devastating combination. And from what I saw, he actually threw a lot of sliders, maybe not a lot, but some sliders as well. And I think that 
that has the potential to be a good third pitch for him because he can kind of flip it over uh, for strike one because absolutely nobody is looking at uh, for that pitch. So could be a big pitch for him too. But just to see him have command and be able to throw his pitches wherever he wanted to was absolutely fantastic. So after the game, Kevin Gosman, who's always really kind of thoughtful and honest in his post-game press conferences or interviews, said, quote, I think today was a big step forward. I could just tell from the get-go get go that I was back to my normal self and back to when I was going good. Then the confidence came back and I felt I could throw any pitch wherever I needed to. And that's the dream as a pitcher, right? When you've got good pitches and you feel like they can, you can just put them where you want it to go. And that's what we saw when Gosman was at his best. And that's what we saw yesterday. So huge deal and just great to see. Kapler said, quote, I thought it was as good as Gosman's looked in quite some time. The split had great action to it. It's always a little tricky to get additional movement on a pitch here at Coors. And sometimes this ballpark tends to kill movement. His fastball had good carry through the zone. He threw a ton of strikes early on and established that he was going to attack the zone. I thought it was a great outing for Gauze. So yeah, it's, it was absolutely huge and I look forward to his next start and hopefully he can keep it going. Uh, Logan Webb, hopefully he can get back on track. I do believe he's going to start game one of the series against the D-backs So he's set to pitch two more times in the Giants' final six games, so that could help them if he's able to get back on track after a rough first inning in his last start against the Padres. So coming up tomorrow, we are going to do a mailbag. The Giants are off today, and then no more off days through the rest of the regular season. So, you know, we do these shows every single weekday, as I said. We're free on all platforms, including on YouTube, so check us out there if you haven't already. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspic. You can follow me on Twitter at Ben Kaspic. That's K-A-S-P-I-C-K. You can see it there. I'm pointing to it on the YouTube channel. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out so much. So thank you in advance and thank you to everyone who's done so already. And if you're watching on YouTube, please hit the like button, subscribe, and comment. I would appreciate it so much. Anyway, I can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Thanks again for listening. You are now Locked on Giants.